John Adams, the second president of the United States, was the philosopher among politicians. Before he became president, he served two terms as vice president under George Washington. I couldn't have imagined a more boring job than being a vice president. Hey, hey, you presided over the Senate, didn't you? That was hardly a monotonous job controlling those lively debates. Yeah, right, I always got the short end of the stick. Luckily, I learned my lesson in the first term. One cannot please everyone. After losing two elections to George Washington, John Adams decided to try his luck one more time. Third time's a charm, right? The third presidential elections were held from November 4th to December 7th, 1796. They were preceded by a bitter campaign. I felt like I should have just packed my bags and headed back to the farm in Massachusetts. Jefferson's Republicans were claiming that we Federalists were no better than the British aristocrats and monarchy. Ultimately, John Adams won the election by a narrow win of 71 electoral votes to 68 for Thomas Jefferson. Adams won in the North while Jefferson won the Southern states. Being president immediately after George Washington was an ungrateful role. Besides, Washington left the office with several issues unresolved. We won the election, but there was hardly much time to celebrate. There were a lot of things to be done. This war between the French and the British was putting a lot of pressure on us to take sides. Well, Mr. I won the election. There was your first challenge. The news has arrived that the French were raiding our merchant ships in the Atlantic. I guess they were a bit angry because of the Jay Treaty. You think? I told you it was a tough job being president. You glad you ran? France began attacking American ships as England had done earlier. In 1797, President Adams sent a delegation off to France to negotiate peace. The French Foreign Minister Talleyrand refused to meet. Instead, Talleyrand sent three agents to demand a bribe in order to discuss a treaty. Adams was furious. Referring to the agents as Agent X, Agent Y, and Agent Z, he urged Congress to prepare for war. Outrageous indeed. I presented the whole case to Congress we all remembered as the XYZ affair. Wasn't so sure. I thought it was just another Federalist hoax. War! This incident showed that we were completely right to break the alliance we had with them. I decided there would be no formal declaration of war. We would stand up to the French and protect our trade. I ordered for our ships to be prepared for any conflict. But we had only one ship at our disposal. Oh yes, this called for action. We needed to build ourselves a proper navy. In July 1798, the United States entered the naval conflict with the French known as the Quasi-War. The two navies were engaged in a series of ship-to-ship -ship operations, mainly in the Caribbean Sea. The state of our navy was bad when the war started. There was the USS Constellation and six more ships that were finished just before the war started. We needed more. Yes, I asked Congress to authorize the purchase of more ships and expand the army to 25,000 men. Luckily, the British have helped us by providing material and shipyards for our use. More importantly, they provided escorts to all of our merchant vessels sailing to their ports. For two years and three months of operations, the U.S. Navy managed to capture a number of French ships. On the other hand, France captured around 2,000 American merchant vessels. It was too big a burden for our economy, just when it started to grow. This quarrel had to end. We agreed. Napoleon Bonaparte thought that the conflict was distracting him from his European affairs. On September 30th, 1800, we signed the so-called Convention of 1800. The French finally acknowledged our right to neutrality in European conflicts. The 1778 Treaty of Alliance with the French was terminated. Right, but there was no way we were going to pay you back for the damages that you demanded. Ah, uh, this surely wasn't what we Federalists were standing for. Signing the convention just deteriorated relations even more between Adams and me. This war with France not only resulted in great financial losses for our country, it cost me the presidency as well. Signing the convention resulted in my own Federalists turning against me. Democratic Republicans, on the other hand, were furious because of the Aliens and Sedition Acts I signed. We needed this set of laws. Relations with France deteriorated so much that we feared an invasion was coming. 
In June and July 1798, Congress passed four new laws permitting the government to arrest and deport all citizens and non-citizens of foreign origin that were considered a threat to our country. These laws were unconstitutional, especially the Sedition Act, which was directed against everyone who spoke against the government. In hindsight, I agree that the acts were a bit harsh. However, I did my best not to misuse or abuse them. I didn't sign a single deportation order during my presidency. In 1800, the year of elections, it became evident that due to increased unpopularity, John Adams had little chance of being re-elected for another term. Still, he had time to make another landmark of his presidency. I was the first president of the United States to move into the White House. Well, you hardly had time to unpack your bags. Very funny, Thomas. From October 31st to December 9th, 1800, the fourth presidential elections were held. John Adams led the Federalist ticket along with Charles Pickney. Well, I wasn't in favor of his candidacy and I openly campaigned against him. Some would say I even sabotaged him. Don't believe it. Our campaign was also harsh on him, especially because of the Aliens and Sedition Acts. As expected, John Adams lost the elections to Thomas Jefferson, who became the third president of the United States. At the very end of Adams' presidency, Congress passed the Judiciary Act of 1801, which created new federal judge positions. The judges would keep these positions for life, so Adams rushed to appoint them before he left. Because this was all done at the last minute, it's called the Midnight Judges Scandal. Needless to say, I was furious at Adams for doing this, done all in bad faith. This put a further stain on our relationship for many years. To be honest, I had had enough. I was glad to leave the White House on March 4th, 1801 to join my wife Abigail at our farm in Quincy, Massachusetts. I didn't even stay to attend Jefferson's <laughs> inauguration.